Welcome back. We're going to discuss briefly scientific notation and how to convert between standard notation and scientific notation. Now if this is something you feel comfortable with, you don't have to watch this video. Alright, so why do we have scientific notation? Well, a couple of reasons I suppose. It's used if you have a really large number or a very small number so that you don't have to write all the numbers in between, all the zeros or so on. It's also used to maintain the correct number of significant figures and I'll touch on both of these topics with you. So the form that a number must be written in in scientific notation, the first number needs to be between 1 and 10, then that number is multiplied by some power of 10, raised, obviously raised to some potential number. So 800 for instance is equal to 8, see 8 is between 1 and 10, times 10, that would be 80 times 10. And the way we write that is 8 times 10 squared, or 800. So 800 or 8 times 10 squared means the same thing. This is standard notation, this is scientific notation. Let's try this one. 2531 is the same as 2.531, that number 2.531 is between 1 and 10, times 10, that would be 25.31, times 10, 253.1, times 10, 2531. So 2.531 times 10 times 10 times 10 is times 10 cubed. So we write that 2.531 times 10 to the third power. Now we can also use it for smaller numbers. If we take this number to get 0.0014 to be between 1 and 10, we'd have to divide by 10, divide by 10, and divide by 10. So we're going to write that 1.4 times 10 to the negative third because we had to divide it three times. The other way to look at it is if we start up here at 800, here was the understood decimal, we have to move, let me see if I can write on here, we started here, we have to move one, two places to get over there and that's why we have a two. If we go down here to the next one, we started here, we have to move one, to three places, so 10 to the third power, and i sorry, this is all a little new to me. All right, and the last one, look, we started here, to get this between one and 10, we have to move one, two, three places over, and because we're moving this way, it gives us a negative three exponent on that, okay? All right, let's change the standard form, we'll kind of go the other way. If we have 1.87 times 10 to the negative fifth, the first thing we have to recognize is that this is still a positive number because there's no negative in front. The negative exponent simply means it's smaller than zero. So here's what I would do. I would, if at least starting off, I would write this out, 1.87 10 to the negative fifth. And then maybe I'll go ahead and get my little drawing tool here. Actually. I think it's going to be on there for us so we don't have to, so I'll say I'm done here. Uh, we start with a decimal here, 1.87, and then now we have to move to the negative to make this number smaller, five decimal places, so one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to write that number, we move the decimal over, and we'll write .00000187. And again, to go back, I start here, I have to move the decimal one, two, three, four, five places to get the number between one and ten. Now it might be easier to write it in scientific notation than to write all these zeros. Remember we said that's one of the reasons for scientific notation is to handle very big and very small numbers. Let's try this one, 3.7 times 10 to the eighth. Now are the zeros going to go before the three? or after the 7. The fact that it's a positive number, they're going to go after to make it a bigger number. So we started with the decimal here, and we have to move it 8 places over. So I'll go ahead and use a pen to do that for you. It started here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places over in order to get to where we needed to be. Okay. 
All right, let's try this one. 7.88 times 10 to the first. Well, because we're multiplying by a 10 to the positive power, we're multiplying by 10, that means this is going to be 78.8. We're going to move it just over one place. Now, in this case, it would probably would have been easier to write it in standard notation than scientific notation. How about this number? Is this number positive or negative? Be careful. That's right. It's a positive number because we have a number here, but because it has a negative exponent, it's a positive number that's smaller than zero. So we need to add zeros preceding this two. So we need to move the decimal place over two places. So we'll get 0 0.02164. Remember the decimal was here, and we have to move it one, two places to the left to make it in standard notation. All right, I'll give you some time. I want you to practice trying to change these standard digits into scientific notation. Go ahead and pause your computer and try those, and then when you're ready, come back. All right, I hope you found that was successful. For the first one, you should have gotten 1.234 times 10 to the fourth. If you want to write 1.2340 times 10 to the fourth, I wouldn't be marking it wrong at this point. The fact that there's no decimal place means that this last zero is a placeholder, and so this number actually only has four significant digits, so the proper way to write it would it be 1.234 showing four significant figures. We still haven't had that discussion that will be coming probably later today. This one, this zero is a placeholder, so you should write 3.69 times 10 to the negative first. This one, it has only one significant figure, so how about 8 times 10 to the negative third? Because again, we had to move the decimal one, two, three places. This last one has only one significant figure, so if you know that, it's going to be one times 10 to the ninth, okay? And that's how we change from standard notation into scientific notation. All right, we're gonna learn how to type these in on the calculator in our next lesson. For many students, this is a little bit of a struggle. I wish we were in person so I could put your calculator in my hand and show you how this is done. I'll do my best to kind of show you this, and you'll just have to let me know if you're struggling with how to enter it on a calculator. All right, thanks for that quick little lesson, and we'll start on how to use your calculator here in just a moment. Bye-bye.